Oh, hey you. It's time for Faves X Fails, AKA your favorite video of the month. A roundup video in which I talk about all of my favorite products and also those that I did not love. The fails, slap them onto my face, talk about the prices, talk about why I love them, or why I hate them, etc. And basically give you the tea, the whole tea for the month of June, filmed in July. So if you are here for these Faves X Fails, then give this video a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe if you aren't already. Notification bell, Wednesdays and Sundays videos. And now let's get into it. Faves X Fails for June, filmed in July. Let's go. I'm very excited. My notes. And now for the primer. You guessed it, I don't have a favorite or failed primer, so I'm just gonna use my Danessa Myricks, of which I have hit pan, and I need to go to Sephora, and I need to repurchase immediately, because this is my favorite, and it's almost gone. Also, this is my current nail situation, which is very representative of my life at the moment. On the one hand, we have this, and then on the other hand, we have balance. Okay, texture is smoothed, oils are controlled. Time to talk about my favorite foundation for the month, actually a skin tint. I'm just gonna tell you what it is. L'Oreal True Match Nude Hyaluronic Tinted Serum with 1% Pure Hyaluronic Acid. I really like this one. The shade that I use is shade 45 medium. This is a good match for me currently. I've been liking it a lot. It feels very lightweight on the skin, similar to the L'Oreal True Match foundation that I love so much. This one's just a little bit sheer, just a little bit more easygoing. I've been pairing it with this Auric Glow Lust, which is really nice. It's a nice glowy kind of combo or by itself. And I really like the way that it performs. So I'm gonna go ahead and add just a couple of drops of that. The only thing I don't like is the actual dropper because the product is very, very liquidy and it's very easy to get it all over your clothes, which is why I'm trying to take my time and trying to be careful with it. I'm gonna try a new brush, this everything brush from Jones Road. Hmm, this video is not about this, but the Jones Road brushes have been so promising. This one just has the perfect density and nice short bristles for that control. So the skin is still healing, though I'm not breaking out as much as I was before. Now I just have some dark spots, some post acne marks, but I'm no longer in pain. Neither physical zit pain nor mental zit pain. Okay, one sheer little layer is enough for me for now. I'm gonna move on to other products, but first I wanna talk about what actually caused the breakouts on my face. That took over two weeks for me to heal, to actually stop new breakouts from forming and to heal the existing ones. This was such a frustration. This was one of the most frustrating skin moments of the last year. And it was all due to this next product that I tried that that sadly not only failed for me, but it also kind of hurt me. Sadly, I'm talking about the Too Faced Born This Way Healthy Glow Skin Tint. I will pop it up right here because <laughs> You bet you're sweet, but I got rid of it. So this is a $42 product and I really wanted to love it because generally I'm a fan of Too Faced Foundation, specifically their Born This Way line. I've always liked their skin tints. And this one I was super excited about because I thought this contained mineral not chemical SPF. I was wrong, I somehow bypassed the chemical ingredient and I slapped it onto my face thinking that everything was gonna be fine and dandy and nope, because I am someone who is sensitive to chemical sunscreens so I cannot wear them at all. In fact, there's only one hybrid sunscreen that I can wear and it is from Airborean. That one is made in Korea so perhaps it is a different amount of this chemical or just a different formulation altogether. I don't know but I just simply cannot use any of these octinoxates or homosalates. I cannot use any of these ingredients on my face. I will immediately break out. And even with the wear test of that skin tint, at the end of the day, I was feeling that something was too heavy on my skin, like my skin was not breathing. I was wearing it for a very long time that day. I was testing it out and I also went to a graduation. So I had the product on my face for over 12 hours and sadly it ruined my skin for two whole weeks. Maybe it'll work for other people, but for those of you with sensitive skin, with acne prone skin, with oily skin, I would just stay away. Also, it's expensive at $42. Whereas this lovely L'Oreal True Match Nude Tinted Serum is only 15 to $20, depending on the retailer, of course. Granted, it doesn't have any SPF, but you can clearly add it on top of something mineral, not chemical, and call it a day. All right, let's move on to some concealer. I did actually enjoy the Catrice 
True Skin High Cover Concealer. Unfortunately, this product is not compatible with the one that I'm wearing on my face because this is a sheer coverage and this is extremely full coverage and together they just look a little weird. Like, why is just my under eye or the high points of my face that I highlighted looking so matte and flawless and everything else is kind of sheer and normal looking, you know? So I'm not gonna use it today, but this is only seven bucks, you guys. So if you are looking for a high coverage concealer that won't break the bank. This one is it. The shade that I have here is 05 Warm Macadamia. This was also a bit too light for me. So I'm gonna have to get my hands on a better shade just to see if maybe I could play around with it. So for today, I'm just gonna go for my Bobbi Brown Skin Full Cover Concealer. This is also full coverage, but this is a little bit more skin-like, I guess. And also the shade that I have here, shade beige, has a little bit of peachiness, which somehow just looks more forgiving when paired with a skin tint. This is last year's fave and still a fave. I'm gonna use a beauty sponge. This one is from Kosas to blend this one out because like I said, this one is full coverage so it could use a little bit of shearing, especially when paired with a skin tint. So good, so fresh and so clean. And it doesn't look too solid, you know? Like the concealer doesn't look too solid underneath my eyes. And granted, I didn't cover up any of my spots just yet, but it's starting to come together. Okay, let's talk about cream bronzers. I have two favorites this month. I know, shock, this never happens, but I've got two favorites. I'm gonna talk about my first favorite first, <laughs> and it is the Pick It Up Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo from Give Beauty by Gwen Stefani in the shade Toastin. So this is a cream contour and a powder bronzer duo. I wouldn't necessarily pair them together. I don't even think I've tried the powder bronzer if I'm honest, but I will say that this particular shade of cream bronzer is like my absolute fave. It's been so good to me. I've been loving it so much. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how much I've been loving it. I'm just gonna load it up on this brush. Oh, so good. And because I have my hair to the side, I'm just gonna shade this side of the forehead. And then I'm gonna go lightly on this side just to make it match, but I'm not gonna go crazy. So what I love about it is how easily it blends into the skin. And I specifically love the shade. It's not a super warm bronzer to the point where you look very tan and glowy, but it's also not a super cool contour. So it's the perfect in-between shade to do what I'm doing right now. To slim the forehead, to carve out and uh, highlight the cheekbone. And the fact that it blends in so seamlessly without moving anything underneath is my favorite part. It just looks so good. Now this product is a duo and it is available at Sephora. So it is a little bit on the pricier side at $28. And when I tried it, I was honestly ready to give it the number one slot. I thought this was the bronzer for me in the cream category. And then suddenly I discovered another favorite cream bronzer product from none other than ColourPop and their bronze sticks at $10 a pop. This is an incredible, incredible product. There are six shades all together. This is one of the shades, La Jolla Cove. And when I tell you this glides on just as easily, if not easier, because this is a stick, than the Give Beauty, I mean it, I was really impressed. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this to contour my nose. I'm using the lightest shade, Laguna Beach, which is actually a bronzer shade for the lightest skin tones, but I'm using it to contour my nose because I don't like a very bronzy contour, obviously. And I also like it to be very subtle. If I am contouring my nose, I want it to be super, super, super subtle. So that's what I'm going for. Just like that and no more than that. The only problem with this is that it does have a funky smell, especially when you first open it, but you quickly get over it once you realize that it's only $10 and it performs this well. I mean, come on. This is so creamy. So easy to blend, whether it's with a brush or with a beauty sponge. Never do I actually contour my nose this extremely, but you know what? Today's the day and I wanted to show you. I'm gonna go all the way into my brows, just like that, but not into the brow bone. I don't like to contour directly underneath the brow bone because it makes my brow a little bit Neanderthal looking, a little heavy. So I just like to go up. And mainly, I kind of like to disconnect my nose from my brow. I think I talked about this before. Love this one and I am impressed. Now, I wanna talk about a bronzer that I didn't love as much, sadly, and I'm actually shocked because it is from Jones Road and so far I've loved almost everything from Jones Road with the exception of that really fuzzy brow pencil that I actually forgot to include as a fail in one of my previous month's Faves X Fails. But anyway, that's besides the point. This bronzing gel sounded like a really great idea until I actually tried it. So the problem with this one is that it's a little bit finicky. It doesn't work with 
all foundations or skin tints. It tends to make products pill if you put it on top of it. Also, I found it to be way too subtle if used on top of your foundation. So this product would probably look great, and I really mean it. This would probably look really great on your bare skin if you have really flawless skin. And I am clearly not the candidate for that. My skin is nowhere near flawless. I have regular breakouts, dark spots, scars from breakouts, things like that. So this just wouldn't work for me because I need helpers. I need products underneath. But but if you have really good skin, regardless of your age, by the way, because good skin is not exclusive to youthful skin, whether you have mature skin or youthful skin, but you do not suffer from any sort of breakouts or texture issues, you will probably really, really like this. For me, it was a little too barely there when worn on top of makeup and by itself, I just wouldn't reach for it unless it's like my good day. But if it's a good day, then I'll probably just stick to my Arborean CC cream. You know what I mean? That's just me. So I just don't have a use for it. $34 product. Not to say that it's bad, just wasn't for me. Okay, let's move on to some cream blushes that I am loving this month. Number one is the Soft Pop Plumping Blush Veil from Makeup by Mario. These two are my two favorite colors, the Just Peachy and the Pinch Me Pink. I've been reaching for these nonstop since I got them and they are excellent. Both of these colors are like the perfect colors of summer. They just make me so happy. And so I'm gonna probably reach for it again. Although I will say I'm really feeling the lavender blush moment of 2023. So I think I'm gonna add a little bit of this, but then I'm gonna top it with something else. So the reason why I like this is because it is very simple and easy to use. It is very intuitive. The colors are gorgeous. This is flattering on problematic skin. It won't aggravate your problematic skin. It's a cream product, but it doesn't feel too balmy or greasy. In fact, it adds a nice glow, but without highlighting any of your imperfections. As you can see, I'm a fan. Really easy to blend. I love it. $30 product. Not the cheapest, but it's one of the nicest. There are six shades all together. Of course, there's neutral shades. There's also deeper shades, much deeper shades, and so on. I recommend. Another blush product that I liked this month was the Fenty Matchsticks clear jelly looking stick that actually somehow reacts to your pH balance. I'm gonna add just a little bit on top right here. This goes on quite pink on me, and it does have some iridescent sparkles. But from what I've seen online, this does kind of look different on everyone. So I think it's a cool product. It's very summery. It feels very fresh. So I do like it. This one is $32. And I feel like it kind of removed my previous blush. So I'm gonna need to reapply just a little bit. There we go. But yeah, that's the vibe. And then probably my favorite blush product for the month is in the powder category. And it goes to Jaclyn Cosmetics Heat Pop Matte powder blush. First of all, the packaging of Jaclyn and Fenty absolutely match. It almost looks like they're made on the same lab, just considering the color schemes and the story. Like the swatches are almost identical, but that's besides the point. The actual product of the Jaclyn Cosmetics blush is so smooth. It's so forgiving on the skin. It's so easy to use. It's so easy to wear. The colors are really flattering. I am highly impressed with this collection. I love all of the colors that I've been using. Colors that I've been reaching for the most are Pink Pop, which looks lavender in my monitor. Peach Pop, which looks rosy in my monitor. And Lavender Pop, which looks purple. So these are my three favorite colors, but there are two more in the collection and all of them have been outstanding. I'm gonna actually put them to use after I powder down, but I'm just letting you know that these were my faves for the month, probably above the Mario and above the Fenty, just because I'm more of a powder blush girl and these really delivered. These really, really, really delivered delivered for me personally. So I'm gonna give it to them. All right, but first I'm gonna clean up the situation on my face. I'm gonna use some concealer, some powders. I'm gonna use this Natasha Denona concealer that I like for flat spots, but not spots that have any sort of texture. This is a very pigmented concealer and it offers great coverage, but because it's so pigmented, it's almost too pigmented for raised bumps. Like it just tends to add more bulk. So I have a love-hate relationship with this product. Yes, it's pigmented, yes, it covers, but it's best used on flat, dark spots, like the ones on my cheek right now. And also it's kind of hard to find the right shade, so I'm not sure if I just grabbed the right shade or not, but hopefully I did. Do you see what I mean? It is very, very pigmented, almost too much pigment, to the point where I might need to add a little bit more bronzer right here. Yeah. 
Okay, so for the rest of the face, Essence 16 hour cover and last. No new powder faves, and I'm not gonna force it. If there isn't any, there isn't any. And then Bare Minerals for the center of the face. And Domini Cosmetics, finally for the under eye. I wish I could find a powder that does it all, that sets my entire face, but because my skin texture is so different everywhere, and chances are most people's skin is probably different in at least two spots, like in the under eye and also the rest of their face. All right, we are coming through. We are looking a little bit more presentable. Notice I didn't apply any powder to the tops of my cheekbones because I wanted to talk about my favorite highlighter for the month. And it is also indeed in fact from ColourPop, it's their $10 light sticks, which is the highlighter version. This applies just as easily as the contour stick, but the only difference with this one is that it blends out a little bit better with the fingers and with the sponge. The shade glazing, which I don't actually have here, sadly, is the one that I've been using, but I guess today I'm gonna go for this gold one called Molten Hot. I'm gonna apply just a little bit of that to the top of my cheekbone, and then I'm gonna blend that out with the tips of my fingers. This looks amazing on camera, and this looks really good in real life too. So now that I've done all that, I am ready for Lavender Pop from Jaclyn. I'm not gonna go crazy, I'm just gonna add a slight amount. Do you see it? If you have a golden undertone, this is your color, I promise you. If you are someone who has a caramel complexion, this is your color, I promise you. This looks so good on anyone with a warm undertone because this totally pops against the warm undertone. I've been talking about this for years now and lavender blush is where it's at this season. I'm 1000% a fan, that looks so good. That actually disguises from all of my imperfections and all of my spots. It brings everything together, the bronzer, the highlighter, the blush, everything. Okay, I might've overdid it on this cheek, but I got excited. And I really just wanted to show you. I'm a fan of this because of how smooth it is, how pigmented yet sheer it is. I don't know. I'm just, I'm a huge, 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 huge fan. I'm gonna tone that down with just a little bit of powder. Make it all blend. I love it. I love it. This is $24, so the most affordable out of all of them. Yes, they could have added more product and not given us all this packaging real estate. We don't need all this real estate. A much smaller compact would have been just fine for me, but I'm not gonna complain, the product is great, and I simply can't complain. All right, we've come to a very exciting category, the brow category. And I'm here to tell you that I have finally found a brow product that I love that is not a brow marker, that is not the NYX Lift and Snatch. It is in fact from Dominique Cosmetics by Kristen Dominique, and it is their new brow blade that I'm a big fan of. This is a really, really easy to use pencil. What's cool about it is that it imitates all of those viral brow blades that you see on TikTok, it has that thin angled shape that is wide wide on one side and really, really precise and thin on the other side. The pencil itself is very soft, very easy to blend, very powdery. On the other side, you have a spoolie and also a sharpener, which means that this pencil can always maintain that cool shape. So I've been loving it. And today I'm gonna use a different shade that I've been using, which is neutral brown. This is the lightest of the three browns that I kept for myself. So what I'm gonna do is use the sharp side and I'm gonna create a baseline for my brow and then also fill in the top so that it looks a little bit fuller. Now I've actually been growing out my brows though I've been plucking the strays, but my brows are currently very thick it's almost hard to get through the hairs because the hairs here are very dense so I love that this pencil is the perfect balance of precise yet soft so this is what I've been using lately for the past week or so since I discovered it. And I gotta admit, I've been enjoying it. So this is a $25 product, I believe. Yep, $25 product that comes in six shades. Very intuitive, very easy to use. If you have really fine brows or very sparse brows, you will love this pencil because it is for you. It will really allow you to become your own brow artist and create whatever shape you want. Just watch any of Kristen Dominique's videos and she shows you how to create any and every shape. So for me today, I'm just gonna go for a very groomed brow. I'm gonna try to maintain my natural brow shape without thickening it too much. I even like the fact that the spoolie is very sturdy and very tiny, so you can really get in there. And get this, I even like their brow gel. I know, shocker. Granted, this brow gel isn't the type of brow gel that I typically use, which will glue my hairs to my skin. But what I like about this one is that it glues my hairs to each other 
other without actually feeling plasticky and solid. So this to me is different, and this is what I really, really like about this product. Like I don't necessarily need my brows to be glued to my forehead, I just need them to be groomed, and this does this. And I feel like the price is fair at $18. I honestly think this is one of Dominique Cosmetics' best launches. It is just so thorough and so well thought out. I mean, I look, look, my brows my look brows so clean. So clean. Better than laminated brows, I think, because they actually look soft. I'm impressed, and for that, I deserve a gummy. Talked about Alani gummies before, and I'll mention them again. I always keep boxes of them here in my filming room while I film, just to give me a carefree type of snack because this is only 90 calories. It just gives me a little something fun to munch on, and it tastes amazing. And thank you, Alani, for always sending me the gummies and all the goods. I really appreciate it. I must retract. I talked about my fave highlighter for the month, but I never actually talked about the fail. So I gotta go back and I gotta present you with my failed highlighter for the month. Sadly, I have to give it to Give Beauty. As much as I loved their contour and bronzer duo, I didn't really feel the same about their highlighter. So now the highlighter comes in this really cool package. It looks a little bit like the Bobbi Brown bricks from back in the day. It comes in three shades. This is the lightest shade. And these are okay. I'm not saying that this is a terrible product, but in my notes, this is what I have. Okay, but a bit chalky, powdery, dry, and just not that smooth. I guess that pretty much sums it up. I don't hate it, but it just wasn't that great. So I guess I got nothing else to say about that. Time for eyeshadow palettes. So there was probably three or four, possibly five eyeshadow palettes that I tried this month. The ones that I remember are these three. And I definitely remember two of them. The third one I completely forgot about and I only remembered it because I was doing a roundup of all the eyeshadow palettes that I tried this month. So let's just talk about them in no particular order. The last one that I tried was the Fool Fantasy from Lunar Beauty and Laura Lee Los Angeles, collaboration between Manny MUA and Laura Lee. And this is what it looks like. Some people were saying that this palette looks a little boring. I will have to wholeheartedly disagree because this palette to me looks really good in person. It has really unique shades, especially these greens on the bottom and all of these shifty shades that the camera just simply does not pick up. I like the fact that there are a lot of neutral shades so you can clearly use this for every day if you need to. But I also really like the format. It offers a lot of different eyeshadows. This is travel friendly. I only got a chance to use this one once so I don't think it would be fair for me to include it in a fave just yet. I think I need to to play around with it some more, but my first impression of this palette was a positive one. I really, really like it. This is $48 palette, so the cheapest of the three that I'm gonna be talking about. The next palette that I tried and tested was the $69 Natasha Denona Yucca palette. Actually, kind of similar situation to the Fool Fantasy with all the limey and olivey greens, and this is what I personally like about this color palette, not to say that everyone else feels the same way, but to me this felt kind of different. Perhaps not so summery, because it doesn't have those tropical oranges and purples and pinks or whatnot, but I thought this was a fresh take on a summery palette, something that hasn't really been done before, so I appreciate it. Again, I only reached for this once, outside of the time that I filmed with it. And now the palette that I completely forgot about, sadly, was the Dose of Colors She's a 10. In fact, I didn't even realize that she was called She's a 10. I thought it was a 10 out of 10 for some reason. But sadly for the life of me, I could not remember this palette. And even when I saw my thumbnail for the video in which I was reviewing this palette, I couldn't tell what palette this was, unfortunately. This looks like a very nice everyday type of palette that you could also use for night. There's lots of beautiful shimmery shades. This is, like I said, $52, so not super affordable. The problem is that I just couldn't remember it. I couldn't remember it at all. So not to say that this is a fail. In fact, I think I initially really liked this palette when I tried it, but the fact that I hadn't reached for it at all is very telling to me. I don't know, I'm gonna keep it around and I'm gonna see if somehow magically she calls for me since she's a 10 and I would like to aim for at least a seven. I don't know, but I'll keep you guys posted. In fact, the product that I've been using the most of this month has not been an eyeshadow palette. It has been the IT Cosmetics Superhero No Tug Shadow Stick. These two colors, shade Silk Armor and also shade Passionate Pearl. So that's what I'm gonna use today because it is easy, it gets the job done, and it's my fave for the month. That's right. I'm gonna pop some of this Passionate Pearl 
onto the high points. I'm gonna blend that out ever so slightly. What I like about these is that they're actually not creamy. They feel somewhat powdery on the skin. Although they apply like a cream, they blend like a powder, so it makes it kind of cool. And this shade, Silk Armor, is such an easy everyday type of color. It gives just enough frosting for the light to catch and reflect, but it's also neutral enough that it doesn't really look like you're wearing anything. Boom. If you want to add a little bit of luminosity to the center of the lid with the Passion of Pearl, you can. Basically, this is what I've been doing. So not to say that this is an elaborate type of eye look, but it was really easy to put together and the products are outstanding. So these shadow sticks, I believe are $25 each. If I'm not mistaken, there are not too many colors, perhaps maybe four or five, but these two have been outstanding for me. They're perfect for every day or if you're going out at night, Passion of Pearl just gives enough pop because it is very bright. I'm into it. And of course, you could always add shadow on top if you want to intensify it or add a little bit more drama, dimension, contour, whatever, you could do that. This acts as a great base as well. Next for mascara, I am still loving my CoverGirl Lash Blast Clean Topia. This isn't even a waterproof formula, but it might as well be a waterproof formula because it performs as a waterproof formula would. No smudging, no budging, price is right, seven to 10 dollars depending on the retailer clean drugstore mascara you can't ask for more i can't remember if i included this in my previous faves x fails or if i even had a favorite mascara but this one is it and if i didn't include it before i'm gonna include it here and now curling the lashes i'm gonna curl the bottom lashes as well this is the refer lash curler ah yes i did include this mascara in my favorite top drugstore product of 2023 video i just filmed that one yesterday i'm actually pre-filming my videos currently but i knew that if i didn't include it in a faves x failed i must have included it somewhere what i like about this one is how easy it is to use the wand is nice and classic the formula isn't too thick yet it applies very quickly you can add a second coat if you want but the first coat does enough for me it is not too heavy on the lashes so it won't weigh down the curl and this is something that's important for those of us with short straight lashes our tiny lashes just simply cannot handle heavier formulas and this one's excellent this one is ideal really it looks so good i'm gonna add a little bit on top just like an extra coat of something. I'm gonna add a little bit on the bottom. I mean, you can clearly see the difference on my bottom lashes. This really makes them stand out. Oh yeah. Okay, final category, the lips. And I have a number of faves and uh, just one fail. So let's go in order. My favorite lip liner for the month goes to Natasha Denona, I Need a Nude, specifically the pink undertone lip liners from the collection. There are eight colors altogether. Half of them are in the neutral, so they are a little bit more on the brown side. The pinks are more pinky, obviously, but the reason why I like them more is because they all sort of suit my natural pinky lip tone, so this is why I like these. I also like these because they absolutely do not smudge, not even if you eat, not even if you eat greasy food, really. So I've been using the shade P5 Gaia, which I have on my lips right now. The shade is like, almost the color of my lips. And because this lip liner is so creamy and so solid, you could use this as a lipstick. The lighter colors, P3 Nina, are obviously lighter, but you could use them to contour or rather to highlight pockets of fullness on your lips. And then obviously you could do the same thing with the darker shades, but the opposite, create pockets of depth and so on. Now, I don't know why I did all that. Perhaps not necessary at all, but I just wanted to show you. My favorite lipstick for the month goes to, I'm so excited for this, Kosas, yay! This most certainly is my favorite product from Kosas thus far. I'm so excited that they created this incredible sheer wet shine type of lipstick. This is so me, so up my alley. There are tons of shades and I am a fan to say the least. I love how they feel on the lips. I love how they look on the lips. I love how they wear. This is probably my top favorite product for the month and it is definitely my favorite Kosas product for the brand so far. So let me give you the details. This sheer lipstick is $24. There are 10 shades all together. Oh, there are not 10 shades all together. I think there are 11 shades altogether, maybe 12. Maybe more, honestly, because I can't find the shade that I've been using. And I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. I'm gonna have to get back to you on that one. All right, I'm gonna go for the shade Malibu. This looks like a light pinky type of color. This is how much product you get. Don't worry, I'm not gonna apply it straight from the tube that way. I'm gonna roll it back. 
for all you anxious people. And this is how it applies. A little bit on the sheer side, but there's definitely a lot of pigment still. A lot of pigment for a lip balm or for a sheer type of lipstick. What I love about it the most is how comfortable it feels on the lips, yet how wet and shiny it appears. This is my favorite combo as of lately. It just feels very everyday, very easy breezy, kind of beachy. So I love it. And I am going to keep all of these. I'm going to find the shade that is my favorite shade. And I will also let you know below what it is. It was Island High, you guys. It was Island High. It was this shade right here, just like the most beautiful medium nude type of shade, Island High, probably my fave. But this one, Malibu, is really nice too. My favorite lip gloss, actually I don't have a favorite lip gloss, I have a favorite lip balm, which is similar to the Kosas lipstick actually. I'm talking about the Tata Harper lip creams. So Tata Harper is a skincare brand, but they recently came out with these lip creams and my favorite shade happens to be the shade Blase, which is very similar to the shade I'm wearing now. And it is also a little bit more pigmented than the rest of the colors. So this is also a lip treatment slash makeup type of hybrid. And I guess this is what I'm reaching for lately because this is what I'm liking. All right, enough positivity. Let's end it on a fail, but not on a negative note. Sadly, this month I did not love the new Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Lip Blurs. This $35 product is sadly just not my cup of tea. First of all, I don't really like these muted shades. If I wanted a red in this type of moussey formulation, I would want it to be punchy. I would want it to be vibrant and in your face, kind of like the Fenty mousses. But this to me, I guess, is just a little bit too boring and not cool enough for Charlotte. I don't know. I'm not crazy about the moussey formula of these types of lip products. I feel like a blurred lip is better achieved with like a MAC Powder Kiss type of product or any K-Beauty product. But this is a little bit too moussey. It's a little bit too thick. It's a little bit too messy also. So this formula is just not my cup of tea. Plus at $35, I think it is a little bit overpriced. So that's my story and those are my faves x fails for the month of June filmed in July. And also this is my final look using all of my favorite products. What do you guys think? I think she's fresh and I think she's ready. She's ready to party at Starbucks. <laughs> on that positive note, I am going to zoom on out. I'm going to say farewell to you guys. I will see you in my next video. Do check out more of my videos over here that I put there for a reason. More faves x fails for more reviews of all of these products that I talked about. And I will see you in the next one. Peace out. I'm out.